Hi guys, this is Mrs. Yesler, and we're going to get your notebook ready to do the types of compounds lab. Um, remember, you've got your handy dandy lab notebook. These are the directions. We're going to get it filled out and ready to go here. Um, oh, this one doesn't have a whole lot of entries in its table of contents, so whatever is the next one here that you would do. This is the types of compounds lab. And then whatever page yours is going to be on, this one doesn't even have very many page numbers, looks like 24 is going to be the page number. I'll turn some light on here. There we go. Um, so we're going to put that in there. This is, goes with unit 6. Okay, so I'm going to flip over to page 24 here, and I'm going to get started. The first thing I need is my title. The title of this lab is Types of compounds. The uh, date that I need to write, I'm going to just follow this little rubric over here. Um, the date that I need to write is whatever date it is. Uh, the date that I'm making this video is 2-23-17. Um, our purpose for this lab is to separate compounds into groups with similar properties. And for your hypothesis, uh, this one's going to require you to make some guesses here, some legit guesses here. We've got calcium chloride, we've got urea, sucrose, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, potassium iodide, and naphthalene, which is mothballs. And what I'd like for you to do is kind of connect them into a group A or B here. Maybe if you think they go with, uh, we'll call it an A group and a B group, and just select which group, which two things do you, or to start with calcium and urea, should they be in the same group or different groups? Um, sucrose, should it be with urea or calcium? Um, should it be by itself? So, but we want two groups. We should have two groups of compounds here based on their properties. So take a minute, decide how you want to group them together into two different groups, uh, and then we'll move on from there. Uh, the next thing that we need is the procedure, which uh, we're going to glue in right over here. So we're going to put some glue on the back of that, and then we're going to paste it in uh, right here. And then as you're going, you're going to make sure you check off the procedure there. And then the next thing we need is um, a place for our observations. It's been a while, but remember your observations is not where you put the data. Your observations is where you write down aha things. Uh, what did you notice? What went wrong? What went well? Uh, what did you see? What did it look like? Qualitative observations there. Uh, you are using blue or black pen, right? I'll turn one page here. There we go. All right, on the next page, um, I'm going to glue in my data and graphs page. So you've also got a data and graphs page for this lab. Um, you're going to write your chemicals here, the formula here, and then you're going to answer the questions according to the procedure. You can fold that in half and glue it in. Um, I might suggest gluing it in right here. I think that's a good place for it. And then when you're done with your data and graphs and calculations, you can write over here your summary. Now remember, the summary has those six sentences. Let me show it to you right here. So when you're done, if you want to come back and work on your summary, um, the first question that you're going to answer is what was the purpose of the lab? So you're literally just going to write the purpose of this lab was to separate compounds into two groups. Um, my hypothesis stated that these three would be grouped together and these others would be grouped together. Um, the results show that these should be grouped together and these others should be grouped together. Uh, therefore, I accept or reject my hypothesis because I was right or wrong or I had them grouped together right or wrong. Uh, my results match or do not match the accepted. For that one, you're going to have to ask your teacher uh, what the results should have been. Okay. 
so that you can compare to what you should have gotten. Um, sources of error include, um, think about things that went wrong. Don't write human error. Uh, don't write calculation error. Um, in this lab, sources of error are, are sometimes maybe contamination. Maybe some of the chemicals got mixed together. You didn't rinse something out well enough before moving on to the next substance. Remember, uh, blue or black ink only, and cross out mistakes with a single line. Don't forget to sign and date it. In fact, that might be a good thing to write down. Underneath where we wrote summary, that when you're done writing that, you need to sign and date it right there. Okay? Uh, when you're done, take pictures of all the pages, including the procedure that you checked off because there's points for that. Okay. Um, all right. So get started. Let your teacher know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.